If you landed on this video, I know you're either an aspiring e-commerce brand looking to scale to seven figures or multi seven figures, or you're an aspiring dropshipper or e-commerce entrepreneur who's just really interested in understanding how do I get to this level? In this video, I'm gonna show you proof and results on exactly how we generated $350,000 in sales in one month, hitting our best month ever for the company. And we're gonna break down exactly what you need to do to go from 50K to $350,000 a month and what we actually did to get there and what that all looked like. The goal for me by the end of this video is to give you guys enough insights, whether you're aspiring or whether you have an existing brand that you're trying to really scale to multi seven figures. It's going to give you insights on both where we were before everything happened at that 50K a month mark, and then where we got to at the 350K a month mark and some of the aftermath and what we've had to deal with since we're hitting that high number. So with that said, what we're first going to do is jump to our Shopify dashboard and show you some of the results here. You know, one of my big goals is to be transparent and to really showcase to you guys a lot of the knowledge that goes untalked about or not it's not talked about online as it relates to building a real e-commerce brand and not just focusing on building like a one product success because at the end of the day building something sustainable like this doing a $350,000 a month where I know that we can continue to do a very high numbers month after month and not have to worry about a product dying is a really important thing for your future and for just building up a brand that's actually worth something down the road and so I really Really want to get into the, a little bit of the nitty gritty today. You can see we did three hundred forty-eight thousand dollars in sales. We had uh, about one hundred twenty-eight thousand people to the store during this month of December, and it was honestly just such a crazy time. Like I just remember like going through this whole experience, you know, because we've been building up to this for such a long time. And as you can see here, we did around eight thousand dollar day. We did twelve thousand dollar days, fifteen thousand dollar day here. We did a seventeen thousand dollar day on December fifteenth. Then we had some lower days at five thousand, twelve thousand. 13,000, 15,000. So we had a lot of big days, um, you know, five figure days, and it was just such a cool experience. And a lot of it was due to a few factors that we're going to dive into here in this video. But what I want to really talk about here first is to showcase to you guys a little bit about like the inside of the company. These are some shots and some, some, uh, photos from a little bit about the facility, a little bit about um, there's one there of me doing a TikTok live stream or actually a few of them, us getting a shipment from the warehouse, a little bit about the brand. But the real goal here is just to showcase to you guys that like this is a company that I started all from my interest in dropshipping back in 2015. I remember getting into dropshipping in 2015. I had four particular products that I tried to sell and my brother and I, we were super excited about getting them and we listed them on eBay and they just didn't sell. And that was kind of our experience is we had to go through so many of these different dropshipping products to find our winning product. And then we kind of built an entire brand around it and ecosystem and community where now we have over a million followers on all of our socials. And we've reached over a billion impressions through our social media content, primarily with short form. And we're going to talk a little about the impact that TikTok has had on the business and how you can take advantage of TikTok um, in today's day and age, um, especially right now with TikTok shop. So with that said, I want to just talk about some of the things that we were doing around the 50K a month mark. So we just moved into a, a 4,500 square foot uh, warehouse and this warehouse allowed us to do a lot more things. Um, but really what led up to us being able to get to that point was finding a product that provides value to the market. You can't just find a product that everyone else is selling and try and sell it. It can work for a time if you have good content, if you can, you know how to run ads, but at some point it's gonna die unless you kind of evolve it into something better where you can create a real experience around it and you can actually be different from your competitors. So that's first and foremost. If you wanna get that 50K a month consistently and actually do 500, $500,000, $600,000 a year rather than just kind of like a couple of 50K months, which I know would be great too. But thinking long term, that's going to set you up better for the lifestyle that you want, the business you want to build, and um, actually building a life that you can choose to do what you want with it. The second thing that's really important to uh, really figure out in these early stages, if you're sitting at, you know, 5, 10, 15, 25K a month, or even just your, your sales are really fluctuating, is you need to dial in your ad creatives and also your organic content. So that's one leverage point that you do have is as a small business, you can create videos that showcase more of your product, demonstrate how it's used, play off viral trends, use UGC style content to use in your advertising because that is what converts the best. 
And we use this for all of the other e-commerce brands that we also manage in addition to uh, this brand. And it allows us to um, have a better understanding of what's working across the market. And that is by far one of the biggest things that is working. You need to test enough. You need to get familiar with making content, whether that's you creating it, whether that's someone you know, someone in your company or someone you're working with, or even hiring in creators to make content for you. It's a very important concept to understand because it gives you leverage. Building a content focused business and font co content focused dropshipping company or e-commerce store gives you a competitive advantage. It's the highest leverage thing that you can build because whenever you launch a new product, whenever you want to promote something, you have an audience to market to for free. The third thing is learning how to make viral worthy short form content and run ads. Uh, there's kind of two components here. One is understanding how to make ad creative that you can continue to repeat and build and create. That's gonna convert for you in the ad account every single time. And the second piece of this is just learning how the anatomy works and learning the structures that actually get views and help you to build a brand that way. So for us, like we did lots of crazy, funny, humorous type content. We were able to kind of just, you know, embrace the personality embrace who we were and just kind of shared our passion with other people. And that's one thing I would advise is if you're kind of in that stage where you do have a few products that are working for you, finding a product that you are passionate about or industry that you're more passionate about, you can kind of get a bit more involved because you actually enjoy it. I am much of the belief that it's important to find something that you enjoy or have an interest in because you're gonna be more driven to follow through than you would with something that you have no interest in whatsoever. So for us, gaming was a re really big part of our childhood and it was a really big part Part of how we drove this business forward. Let's kind of transition now and, and have a look at a couple of things um, that, that we were experiencing at the time. During this time, I'm just gonna pull up our TikTok ad account right now, being super transparent with you guys. This was the month leading up to here. So this was September 1st through 30th. So I'm just gonna refresh the account for you. So during September, we were kind of integrating uh, TikTok a lot more into our strategy. And as you can see here, um, we had a total of 4.65 ROAS of the whole month. We spent about 3,400 179 and we generate around 16,000. Let me see where these campaigns were. Scroll down a little bit. So in September, we were kind of like really figuring out our ad creative a lot better. Like we had been running ads, you know, the last year and a half, but we really started to kind of ramp things up a bit more when we got into kind of coming into Q4 of last year. Here they are, they're right here. So there's three campaigns here. We ran a uh, campaign or a CBO campaign that was set up as a DCT. And we also ran a smart performance campaign, which we'll talk about that campaign structure here a little bit later in the video. So we were able to do uh, 4.85 on one, 3.27 on the other one. And then um, as we go into October, as we start ramping up, the next month, we ended up doing 179 sales, $37,000 in revenue, and we did 7.36 ROAS, okay? So we spent $5,000 and we made around $38,000. So if we jump back to our Shopify and we have a look at that same period, we can see during September, I think we did around 58, yeah, $58,000 in September. And we were kind of sitting in, in like averaging around this point at 58,000. And then when we go into October, October. You can see here that we did about 57,000. So we're kind of sitting around that same mark, but you can see that with TikTok ads, we were able to kind of find something that was working. So a lot of that came down to our creative. But then we go to the next month, November, this is where we started to kind of double down on what was already working for us. So whenever something works in the business, it's important to move fast and take action quickly rather than try and plan and you know build out a whole strategy, just implement and take action and be quick to implement. That, that's all I'm really trying to say. It's a very, very important skill and it's served me very, very well over the years. So in November, you can see that we start scaling. We go from doing $58,000 a month, $57,000 a month to doing $201,000 in November. So what happened during this time and what did we actually do? So you can see here on November 24th, which I believe was one of the days around Black Friday, um, we did $21,500. So a multi five figure day, which is really crazy. And if we can have a look at the relationship between um, TikTok results and also Shopify, let's see how much of a portion this was through the ads manager. Now I'm showing you guys the ads manager here for TikTok. Also have, have uh, show you the meta ads manager as well. And then Google um, and Shopify. The reason I'm showing you this instead of like something like Triple Whale is just because I know that you guys are more familiar with these platforms right now. And I wanna make this video, um, you know, not everyone uses Triple Whale. So I wanna make sure that you guys can kind of see inside the ad account. We'll talk about Triple Whale a little bit later too. As you guys can see, um, during the month of November, we spent around $8,300 and we did 
8.69 ROAS, okay, for the entire month. Like this isn't just inside a campaign in one ad group, like a lot of people show you, like this is the entire campaign, right? We did $72,380. So you can see we had a few campaigns that did well during this time. Um, we had some DCTs, we had some smart performance. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit later. But yeah, you can see one of our best campaigns we did, let's see, 19,000, 10.6 ROAS. Pretty crazy, right? So we were like, okay, this is working. We're starting to basically use the successful creatives that were starting to get sales. We created more like that. We dissected them. We figured out what was actually gonna work and then we just made more of them. That's basically what we did. So this is TikTok. Now, if we go over to Facebook, I wanna show you guys Facebook just for full transparency. I wanna show you this ad account rather than just showing you some screenshots because we do monthly reporting um, for the company. Company. Um, but I want to show you, we had this account actually get hacked, which was so unfortunate. It happened earlier this year, but I still have access to all the back end here and showcasing to you guys like the results. I just don't want any of you guys to be fishy about uh, the results. So I just thought I'd just show you because it doesn't show like the full averages all the way down the bottom. Um, so if we go back to that same period, let's go back to November and see what we did in November. We're going to kind of have to add it up though. So let's see. November, that's two, that's November 2022. This is not our first ad account or not our, well, now we have a new ad account, but this is not our first rodeo with uh, getting accounts disabled. So November, 2023, here we are. $52,770 generated with Meta at an 8.08 .08 ROAS on average. So you can see here, we only had a few campaigns. We also had the DCT structure on, on Meta as well. Uh, we have a bit of a hybrid method to how we run ads, but we can talk, we'll talk about this a little bit more in our, our strategy and how we did this, but we did 52,000 on Meta that month. Uh, we did uh, 72,000 on TikTok. So, you know, roughly we're looking at what, 120, uh, 125 in Rev. And we did about $200,000 uh, in revenue with Shopify. Our Google during November time, um, if we go to, let's see, November 1st through 30th, let's see if we can get this like that. We did right around 33,900. So we did about 34,000. So we, in large majority, a lot of the sales came from our paid media and the rest of it came from organic. Um, a lot of our traffic and a lot of the, the people that come to our site buy or come through TikTok. Uh, we also had uh, some TikTok shop campaigns um, that we run through TikTok ads as well. So there's all sorts of different revenue that's coming into the company, but that's about 200,000. So then this is kind of where things kind of get crazy because we're like, all right, we're going to double down again. We're going to do more of what's working. And we also know that this is a great buying time of the year. Let's kind of ramp things up and do even more. So what we did is in preparation for December, is we made double the amount of ad creative that we did in November. We analyzed the best creators from what were working before and getting the high ROAS. We made more of them. We then um, doubled down on meta and we just started investing more time into the creative aspect of our advertising because the way that I see it, the way that I, I like to teach people is it's so important that you don't think about so much the complexity of the campaign structures and the interest targeting. It's all about creative. If you learn how to make good creative, you'll target the right people and you'll get the high profitable results. So with that focus, when you approach your advertising, this is always, always the most important thing. And so the more you learn about creative and the more experience you have, you can basically implement creative that's gonna work for you and generate more profitable results. And there's many, many e-commerce brands that come our way that we work with and we almost double their hours just by implementing the way that we do our UGC-based content through ads. So let's have a look at December and let's see what we're doing here. So $348,000 uh, one month, which is just, it, it's honestly crazy to think that we did that in one month. And let's kind of look at what we did in uh, December on Meta right here. All right, so on Meta, we did $115,000 at 6.07 ROAS. Um, I also have kind of a screenshot of showcasing to you guys, like this is the actual amount. So again, this is like lifetime. As of February, 2024, this screenshot was taken. So the numbers do appear, um, but because the the account was compromised, um, it doesn't show all of the, the totals down the bottom um, when you do lifetime for this account. So again, we have multiple accounts. Um, um, that we have to warm up and, and get going as well, just in case something like this does happen. So $115,000 on Meta, 6.07 ROAS. And then if we go back to TikTok and let's have a look at what we did in December on TikTok, be prepared, it's it's kind of crazy. Best month that we've ever had um, on TikTok, we did, we spent $14,000 and we generated $115,000 in one month with eight ROAS, eight ROAS flat, absolutely crazy. Still to this day, it's, it's so surreal to look back on 
on this and, and see that we did this. Cause I just remember like how much of a grind it was to like get these results because we had to produce so much creative because one of the lessons I wanna learn or wanna teach you guys um, from showing you this is um, one of the things to keep in mind when scaling is scaling happens in the amount of creatives. It doesn't actually happen in the amount of ad campaigns. So it happens with the amount of creatives and the focus on creatives. That's what helps you scale. If you don't have that piece down, you're never gonna be able to scale, especially at the ROAS or the break even that you want to, or whatever KPI you're measuring. It's just gonna get harder and harder once you're at scale. You have to really lean into creative and really break down what's working for you and how you can make more of that for future campaigns. Profitable scale happens with ad creatives that are dialed in, meaning that you need to understand how to make ads properly this year because the more that you can make ads not feel like ads that are more natural and authentic, generally speaking, you see higher conversion rates. And when you can focus on top of funnel, middle of funnel and bottom of funnel ads, you can kind of capture everyone. You can get people in the door, kind of a cold audience, people who don't know you and then nurture them and then kind of close the deal or push them to actually purchase who are familiar with your brand, right? So you can nurture them with organic content as well, but it's important to understand all these different phases of the funnel and move people down that funnel. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to mention is just things to keep in mind when scaling and kind of going over this is when we were going through this whole uh, crazy month, things were breaking, okay? Like, like, things were breaking. Like I remember I was talking with our customer service rep and I was I was talking about like, hey, how you doing? Like how you're holding up? And like every five minutes an email was coming in. Every three minutes an email was coming in. And by the time we'd done with our 45 minute call, I mean, there was like 50 new emails that came through. And I was like, okay, the volume at which we're getting emails is crazy, right? Because people want to either change orders, they want to request different things, change their address, whatever the case may be. It, it was just insane. So I our customer service was like full blast. We like started getting backed up because there was other responsibilities that they had to communicate with other people like through the live chat on the website. We started like getting so many orders that all of our controller technicians, like they couldn't keep up with the builds. So we had to push back our build times and they were already, you know, two, three weeks. We had to push them to four or five weeks and everything just got more intense. We were like trying to hire new people during this month. We brought on, I think two new full-time uh, people and a part-time person to build controllers and it just got crazy. Like things just started to break and that's what happens when you scale and it can happen in micro adjustments like as you get to different levels of scale like you know you may be able to manage 5 10k a month on your own you know maybe 25k just depends on like the business and the product that you have and how you're all doing it are you doing it through a 3pl company are you drop shipping it from a us based supplier or someone in china you know do you actually have a physical warehouse with employees who are filling those orders for you whatever you're doing and however you're doing it things are just going to break and there's going to be problems that happen and one of the most important things about being an entrepreneur is being able to problem solve. Things are going to break and that's okay. It doesn't mean that your business is broken. doesn't mean that your business doesn't work or there's something wrong. It just means that you're now at another level where you need to make some adjustments. And so we've been going through a lot of those adjustments in Q1 of this year. We've had to heavily scale back, still trying to catch up and, and kind of get on top of all the orders. We're so close to being there, but it's really had a big whiplash effect on all the sales that we generated because during this time, you know, and we still did in January, we still did $167,000 in January. But you can see we started really scaling back because we're like, we cannot maintain this. Like we can't. We're, we're getting in orders faster than we can ship them out. And so if we kept doing that, then we're never going to be able to catch up, right? And then we don't want to provide a bad customer experience. So, you know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, now you're scaling back. Now you're not doing as much in revenue. Well, guess what? That's the reality of business. You can't infinitely scale, right? Like you can't, you can't infinitely scale. What If we did a, a $500,000 a month in January or February, we'd be completely destroyed. Like we would not have enough people to manage it. We'd have too many emails to manage, too many custom orders, not enough inventory. Our sales forecasting would be all out of whack and we just wouldn't be able to handle it. So it's important that you kind of scale in phases. Now you may not do what we did. We went from 50 to 350K a month within 60 days, but you may be able to go from 50K to 100K a month and then kind of manage it, make some adjustments and plan for your next scale to 150, 200K a month, right? So looking back, it was great that we scaled. But one big mistake we made is that scaling is so glorified
side, okay? It's great to scale, but it's also great to just be consistent, which is why I believe that dropshipping is a great way to start out as an e-commerce um, in, you know, aspiring entrepreneur, like you want to build an e-commerce company, like start with dropshipping. But you have to build infrastructure once you have a product that's working for you, because if you don't, it's going to die. And two, it's just so, it, it fluctuates so much in what your sales volume will be. And let's be honest, people don't want two weeks shipping and you're going to get backlash from that after a while. Once you sell enough units, people are going to hate you for it, leave you bad reviews. And then all of a sudden you got to drop the product and move to something else because your brand's tainted. Like, let's be honest. And that's not what I want to teach you guys here. Now I want to teach you guys how to drop ship and how to get going, how to find, you know, really good products, how to vet them, you know, how to set up logistics, you know, how to find even find 3PL companies and whatnot. But, you know, for those of you who are already at scale, like you've already got a lot of those systems in place. So I guess like concluding all of my thoughts there is scaling every single month is not necessarily your goal. We'll kind of work up towards it. So that's kind of, um, you know, kind of a bit of a breakdown of like that journey. And I guess like one thing that what I want to kind of transition to now with you guys is I wanted to kind of transition to talking about, you know, what has it been like at the 350K month? So once we hit that 350K month, we basically 6 x our business. And at that time, there's so much that's going on, right? Like we talked about the customer service, fulfillment, there's like lagging effects of all the influx of orders. So even returns coming in a little bit later, right? Because you get just naturally based on the percentage of returns, you're going to get more people sending things back that I need to be replaced or fixed or something like that. And that takes even more time and takes it away from being able to fulfill the orders that you're still back ordered for, right? Like is there's problems that you have to deal with. So there's lots of things that, that kind of happen there. Another point I wanted to make is managing more ad spend requires more resources. Now we're kind of like, when we're trying to maintain a six figure a month or multi six figure a month revenue mark, you really got to have a good team in place. Now this may go for your ad creatives because we're very heavy on, on creative. We're very heavy on content. And I see a massive window of opportunity for people who are willing to embrace that content is the path because with any product even if you have a product that someone else is selling if you can just make better content around it if you're better at making ads if you're better at selling it and without even making it feel like an ad you're going to sell more units like just hands down you're going to sell more so one of the competitive advantage you can have is just doing the thing that most people aren't willing to do which is learning how to make actual real creatives so that's like really really important for you to understand and that's that's what tiktok's really done is it allowed it's opened the door wide open for you to make short form content that can be repurposed onto YouTube shorts, Instagram, Facebook reels that gets you brand awareness. You want to build that brand awareness because you've got to build a name for yourself even when you have a dropshipping company. So those are some of the things or that's one of the things that I noticed being at that 350k a month mark. The second thing that I want to talk about here with the 350k month is when you start doing that level of volume, you have to start looking at different things. You obviously have your kind of uh, top KPI metrics, which is your ROAS, you'd love to be profitable on the front end, right? Which is what a big focus is for a lot of e-commerce companies is like, can we be profitable? How profitable can we be on the front end? But it's also the back end side of things, right? We've got the email marketing. We've also got uh, things like CRO, which is conversion rate optimization. Uh, once we got through November, December, January, if we look at sales through those three months, I mean, we did three quarters of a million dollars in three months. We had 315,000 people come through our website. And so the conversion rate matters because if we just improve the conversion rate by 0.1, we would have added who knows how much more revenue, right? Like if if, if we had a 0.1% a higher conversion rate, we generate tens of thousands of dollars more. So when you start doing a certain volume and you start getting to a certain level between, you know, that 50, 100K mark and higher, it becomes so much more important that you focus on optimizing the site for conversions because the less friction you can create between the person who sees your ad and purchasing the product, the more sales you'll generate. And so for us right now, one of the big things that we're focused on because we know we get a lot of our organic social traffic because of our large, you know, organic following of like a million followers. And I think half a million of those are on TikTok. We've got half a million on YouTube. A lot of those people are funneling in from social media. And so our goal now is how can we convert more shoppers or more website visitors into sales? 
So we can do retargeting, we can do email marketing, and we can also just make it a better user experience on the website. And so there's lots of different things you can do to kind of optimize that and look at that. Now, the other thing too is one thing that's become uh, a lot more important as well during this, this process and in hitting 350K is, again, I'll talk more about this uh, maybe in another video in more depth if you guys are interested in, in hearing more about it, you know, using a data attribution platform like Triple Well, where you can actually see if your Google, Meta, uh, TikTok performance, and organic performance all in one place and be able to make better decisions on what you need to do based on what's happening with the marketing channels. CRO, really important. And then also just creating uh, return customers, getting repeat purchases. Very, very important once you start getting to those certain numbers. You can still do them early on. They can still help you, but they become higher leverage when you're pushing more water through the pipe. The less water through the pipe, the less leverage you have. The more water, the more leverage. So you can kind of direct that, those customers in the right way. So, you know, if you're a brand that's doing, you know, 25K a month or more and you're looking for some help or some advice or some strategy, then uh, check the link in the description. We'd love to just have a chat with you on how we might be able to help you to kind of scale and start doing six or multi seven figure or multi six figure months. This third or the second thing that I notice common mistakes is dropshippers and e-commerce owners are too quick to turn off ads. Um, and it's particularly when they don't equate to sales. So let's say you launch a product and you know, you're unsure if it's the, the right product or it's the right ad creative and people get so emotional about making ad decisions. You know, I, I think it's very important that when you're looking to build a brand that you understand that it's going to take marketing, but you also understand there's going to be have to be some other learning involved in order for you to really build this out and make it into a multi six figure, seven figure brand. And those skills include understanding and learning more about marketing principles, understanding and learning more about brand, product experience, and really serving your customers and understanding like who your customers are. When you understand more of those aspects in depth and not just at the surface level, you can make better marketing decisions and you can get better results because of it. So I noticed too many people are just quick to turn off an ad because of X, Y, and Z, or it's not converting fast enough, or, you know, the ad's been running and, you know, it, it just isn't working after two days. It's emotional decision-making that you need to avoid. You, you can't do what you think you should do. You should always do things based on data and your experience or, or someone else's experience at very least. So that's a big common mistake I see. And I think it holds a lot of people back because if they just didn't get emotional about those decisions, then they'd soon realize that they could be really really successful with it if they just give things enough time and they really critically think about what they're doing and how they're doing it. The third thing, third common mistake that I see is only trying one ad creative or running one campaign with only a few ads. And if it doesn't work in like two or three days, they just turn it off and it's not a good ad. I cannot tell you guys how many times when I'm on my group coaching calls with other e-commerce owners and they're talking to me about their new ads that they're setting up and they're running that the amount of people that come and ask me a question like, hey, Jordan, so I started this campaign like four four days ago and or, or they, they wouldn't even say the time frame. They would say, hey, Jordan, so I started this campaign and I just haven't been getting any conversions. Like I, I tried to follow this method with the creatives and blah, blah, blah. And then I asked them some simple questions. I, I asked them, how many days is the campaign running? They're like, oh, it's been about 72 hours. I'm like, okay, how many creatives do you have in the ad account? Oh, I have like two right now. I have two ad groups and both of them in the same ad group or in two different ad groups in a CBO. I'm like, okay. And how much are you spending daily? They're like, oh, I just got my budget set to 10 dollars a day and then I have all the information that I need and this is what I tell them you haven't spent enough money to get the data that you need you aren't running enough creatives in your campaign and you're getting too emotional about making a decision to shut off the ad you haven't given enough ad spend you haven't given enough time to learn and so you've got to give it more time you've got to have more creatives in order for you to run a successful campaign you have to have the ability to be patient and not make decisions based on how you feel and what you think especially in the beginning and I know it's a tendency for a lot of people when you have certain budgets, or you have certain you know parameters around how much you can spend on ads before it has to work. If you go on with that mindset, it's going to really affect your ability to successfully interpret data and make better decisions. And so if you can go in with like, hey, I've got this amount of ad spend and I've got this budget and this is what I can set daily to be comfortable where I don't need to touch it for seven to 14 days. That's really where you want to be. So a lot of times the advice I give is one, you need to up your budget. Two, you need way more ad creatives. You need like three to five per ad set, run two ads 
headsets with three to five different creatives in them. And you need to let it run for at least seven days and not touch it, not change budget, not ch turn off ads, nothing. Like just let it run. And oftentimes people will come back to me and say, hey Jordan, like I let it run for seven days and I, I had a bunch of creatives, like now we're actually getting some sales. And I'm like, yeah, see, that's, that's what you need to do. You need to give it time. And so that is a very important lesson is the experts, the people who know what they're doing with ads and have had a lot of experience, they're not quick to shut off ads and they're not quick to jump to conclusions on what's actually happening and what's not. So that's what I would advise is for anyone who's starting a new uh, sales channel or you're just getting into advertising, highly recommend just being patient. Don't get emotional, look at the data and make decisions on what the data is telling you and give it enough time, okay? Because these algorithms, they need to learn. Especially if you're on a new ad account, you can't expect it to get sales within two days. It's just not realistic. That's not how it works. So the more data the ad account has, the better it's able to optimize for your audience, especially if you've been selling and building, you know, conversions in that ad account for the same product. So those are the three most common mistakes. So the last thing that I want to kind of share with you guys, which I think is going to be the most valuable part is why I think the top reasons were for how we managed to scale our brand successfully and be extremely profitable. I mean, across the board, our ROAS was somewhere around five to six average across Google, Meta and TikTok, which by industry standard, you know, if you're doing but somewhere between 1.5 to 2.5 ROAS, that's generally pretty standard or pretty decent results. So we're talking about two, three X that or higher. So the first thing is we already had a strong foundation. So, you know, as I share with you guys here, a few images, like we had a strong foundation. We had a warehouse, you know, we had a building, we had a content studio already set up. We could actually film content and you don't need this necessarily to be successful. And that's not what I'm saying, but we had resources available to us to be able to sustain what we were doing. Um, over here is my brother. This was my little office here. Um, and then we had, you know, a content studio. We'd film content. So like, you know, we do TikTok live streams as well. So like we were set up in a way, I guess, like building the foundation. We had the brand. We spent a lot of time on the brand. Um, you know, the vision I had for the brand, I wanted to build into something that was going to be impactful. I wanted to create an unboxing experience that when someone would open their product, that it was kind of like a whole experience, right? So we had this like, you know, magnetic, I wish I had a box with me to show you guys. Maybe I'll do a video showcasing you guys a bit of the product packaging and stuff. Magnetic box inside was like a nylon mesh case where it was sitting in like this satin uh, purple cushion, which was really nice. Quality was important. Everything, every detail of this we thought about. And it's important that those things are thought about, you know, whether that's before or after, you don't need to have all this stuff done before, but have Having a strong brand foundation and having a, a uh, focus on content creation in the beginning was a way that really helped us kind of scale quickly and profitably because we had so much reach through the organic content that we're doing. So if you have a brand right now and you're not making content, then I highly, highly recommend that you prioritize it because that that is one of the biggest points of leverage that you can have is building your digital real estate and having social media channels where you can on command generate sales, send out a, a video, a photo and say, hey, promotion or you launch a new product like you need to have that leverage in order to stay alive and really thrive so that's the first thing that i think we had a strong foundation and i think most drop shipping businesses don't scale well because they don't have these things in place they're not thinking about them if you have a product that's taking off and doing really well you need to think about building something around it while you have the opportunity because if you don't get on it quickly it can die very quickly and then you don't have the chance so getting on that that quickly and building a strong foundation, very important. The second reason is we focused on TikTok really heavily. So you can see here that I was doing TikTok live streams. You know, this is another one. I think on this live stream, I took this photo because we had 5,000 live viewers on the TikTok live stream and I was just showing different design controllers and demonstrating the product. But the amount of like brand awareness that we generated from TikTok was astronomical. And now like TikTok lifts the results, like not only for our own brand, but all the other e-commerce brands we work with and run all their marketing for, we see a massive lift in Google ROAS and, and Google um, like a profitability when we're running Meta and TikTok. Like there's a, there's a positive relationship there. So TikTok is a huge platform. And again, guys, TikTok shop, like just get on TikTok shop. You don't even need to have a thousand followers. Like make a TikTok shop, have your products on there and start making posts that have your products linked to TikTok shop because you instantly get like 10 times the more organic reach than a regular post. And that's what TikTok is pushing because they make money when they sell your products and they help you sell your products. That's a huge thing. TikTok is massive right now. And if you're not focused on it, then I don't know what you're doing. You're living under a rock and you're missing out on the biggest opportunity of the decade. Third thing is we repurpose and strategically set up Medicare 
campaigns to double dip and use the leverage we had. So again, we reused in, in some degree the TikTok creatives that we had made and repurposed them onto our meta. And that also generated very high ROAS results. So proven creatives on TikTok also work really well on meta. Uh, we've seen using meta ads don't really work well on TikTok. We see more of TikTok styled creatives first and then putting them on meta is the best formula for success. TikTok's just really fast fatiguing platform. You know, like you can have a creative that might do well for maybe one to two weeks on TikTok, but maybe it might last about four weeks on, on meta. So you have like a faster creative fatigue cycle on TikTok, which gives you tons of fuel to throw on meta and scale meta. So um, that's a really good advantage too. The next thing is we leveraged content over the months prior and we made it a priority so that when Q4 came around, we actually had a lot of awareness. And this created like the time where like everyone knew about us. Everyone knew that we were available and people started buying products for not only themselves, their family members, their friends, and Gamenetics was on their mind. And that's what content does is content keeps your product and your brand top of mind. It makes them want your product. It reminds them that it's there and i think that's another reason why we completely blew up in q4 is because we had that kind of uh, social momentum from all of our content so if you want to have success like this and you want to blow up really quickly i mean within 24 months of starting this brand we've done uh, i think 2.1 million just with shopify because we also do amazon ebay etsy uh, for the brand as well you know in 24 months i mean it's it's pretty crazy to go from zero to that and in the first six weeks i think on uh tiktok we blew up and we did about seven $71,000 in the first six weeks. This is back in 2022, beginning of 2022, but there's still huge windows of opportunity here because TikTok shop's now available and it's like crushing right now. Really what I would say is in conclusion here of like these top reasons, um, if you put all of your energy into making content and making ad creative, then this will help you to give you a competitive advantage. We call it the TikTok trifecta. It's TikTok organic and going viral, TikTok shop and TikTok ads. Using all three of these together in a triangular, format <laughs> It's not the Illuminati, just just a triangle. TikTok shop, TikTok ads, and organic. You basically creating a formula for your brand and your business that can completely take out your competition, make your competition irrelevant, and build an e-commerce company that can scale very, very quickly and be very, very profitable. So if you guys would like me to kind of break down a little bit more about organic and viral content, you'd like to see kind of how to actually do that and a roadmap for creating content, you know, based on whether you have resources or even on your own, then let me know down below in the comments if you'd like to see that video and I can make that video next. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Would love to uh, make some more videos for you guys. So let me know any suggestions you have down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed talking about this and I just can't wait to share more with you. I love doing this. I love teaching and uh, I just, I'm reminded every time I make videos like this that I really just love sharing my knowledge with people um, because my goal is to inspire you that you can achieve your dreams. And if you go back to my channel in 2016, my whole reason I got on YouTube was to document the journey and share my life to hopefully inspire you that, hey, you don't have to be anyone special to achieve your dreams. You don't have to be anyone special to achieve your goals and build the exact lifestyle that you dream of right now, because that's what I've done. And uh, it's a great life and I'm very, very blessed. So thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next video and uh, let me know what you think.